Hi, I'm Bill Snodgrass, and in this episode, we're going to do a photography tutorial on uh, landscape photography using the rule of thirds. Now, if you're an experienced landscape photographer, then uh, this video is, is not going to really add much to your experience. But if you're new to photography or you're new to uh, landscape photography, or you, you just want to know a little bit more about the rule of thirds, that's, this video is for you. Um, we're going to talk about that in this video. And we're, we're going to go out in, we're in Northwest Indiana. There's a lot of corn, there's a lot of soybeans, there's a lot of barns. Uh, we're we're going to take some pictures of landscapes and, and you can pretty much bet those things are going to be in it, uh, in, in some of the pictures. So uh, that, that's what we're going to do. Um, so let's get started. I, I got a, a couple places in mind where I'm going to try to grab some pictures. And I got a couple pictures I'm looking for. And so we'll, uh, we'll go and get into that right now. So let's talk about the rule of thirds just for a second real quick. It is a rule of thirds. That's what they call it. But it's really just a guideline, a suggestion. It's not like a rule that you have to do this on every shot. So the, the way the rule of thirds works is, is you, you divide your screen up into a tic-tac-toe board. And the, the prominent features of your picture uh, will be on the horizontal line or the vertical line. So you got two horizontal lines, you know, third down, a third up, or a third in, or a third in. And then the most important things you'll put at the intersections of those of those lines. That's what the rule of third is. Now, it's not something that universally works in absolutely every picture, but um, we're, we're going to use it in, in some landscape pictures. Now, let's talk a little bit about landscape photography. First of all, Landscape photography means you're going to take pictures of the landscape, the trees, the, the horizon, the sky, the clouds, all that stuff. Don't trespass. Don't go somewhere that's illegal to go in order to take a picture. That's that's bad practice. Secondly, be safe. Don't put yourself in a situation where getting this picture could cause you to never get another picture again, if you know what I'm talking about. Don't go on railroad tracks because getting hit by a train, that's going to ruin your photography experience. Don't go in places where you shouldn't go, places that are dangerous just because you're trying to get an interesting camera angle. Don't do those kinds of things. Lastly, last piece of, of, of photography advice, don't get so caught up in taking the picture that you forget about what's going on around you because it, the, you, you could put yourself in a situation where you're unaware of the environment and that may end up being also dangerous. So keep safety in mind as you go forward. Now what we're gonna do today, it's it's um, it's the, it's late in the afternoon, it's, it's a couple hours before sunset. So we have a nice angle of light coming in from over here and it's illuminating this barn over here. I'm gonna take a couple pictures of a barn uh, because I like the way the shadows and the way the light plays on it. Late in the afternoon, early in the morning, those are the best times to get landscape pictures because of the, the angle of the light, uh, it brings it down and it's not so harsh that it's coming straight down from above. When the light's coming from straight above, it's kind of difficult to, to work with that. All right, so we're going to get out here and take this picture, and then we'll talk a little bit about the picture. Um, so I'm going to go take the picture. I'll be right back. All right, so here's the picture I took, and you can see what I, what I did was um, I used the, the left third to sort of give me a place to put the vertical aspects of the picture. And then I used the bottom third to kind of go through the top of the barn, to kind of go through that, that top there, to, to put that in a strong position within the composition. And that's what the rule of third does. It allows you to align your elements of the picture so that they're in strong positions. And according to the rule of thirds, which I like to call the suggestion of thirds, according to the rule of thirds, those lines, those horizontal lines, and those vertical lines uh, are the are the strong places. And the strongest places are the four intersections of those lines. So. Let's go do uh, another picture and we'll talk about that one also. All right, I am, I've, I've come to the, to the end of a dead end road. I'm at the end of a dead end road. And uh, this is Northwest Indiana. So we got a lot of barns, we got a lot of uh, cornfields, and I believe this is a soybean field. Not 100% sure, but it looks like soybean to me. When I got here to, and realized I couldn't go any further, um, I was looking, actually I was looking for like a tree out in the middle of the field all by itself. I did not find that. What I did find is this horizon here. And I, I feel like I'm going to be able to, to, to shoot some sort of a composition uh, using the rule of thirds and another thing called negative space. I'm going to have like the, 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 the soybean field down in the bottom of the frame and then just kind of this, the empty sky above is sort of the negative space composition to go along with my horizontal rule of thirds. So I'm just going to shoot out the window of the car here. All right. 
so I grabbed a little bit of the trees over here on the side to uh, just kind of give some perspective of the picture. And, and I set my, my horizontal, my bottom horizontal line just above the, the top of a little row of trees. I wanted to get a lot of sky uh, because we're, we're trying to collect a little of that negative space work as well. Um, this, this is just an, another way uh, of composing a picture using rule of thirds where we're, we're using the horizon and the bottom line of the rule of thirds composition guides to, to give us some place to start in shooting the picture. And then if you want to shift the line up or down a little bit, if you want a little bit more horizon, what would, what would be a less interesting picture, if you buy into the concept of the rule of thirds, a less interesting picture would be to put the horizon in the middle of the composition. Um, putting the horizon at the top of the composition, like this one, uh, it, it is probably more interesting. And then if you wanted to be really strict about rule of thirds, you could put the horizon you know, just on the bottom and have only the, 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 the field and the sky. So here's, here's some rule of third pictures. Here's some pictures of the same scene with, with different compositions. Um, most people who, who look at the pictures would find the ones where the rule of thirds was followed better than ones where the horizon was in the middle. All right, let's go and let's go find something else. I really would like to try to find like some isolated tree out in the middle of a cornfield or a soybean field or whatever it is. So let's let's get moving again. Always wear your seatbelt. Here's another tip. You're not gonna you're not gonna get this tip in many in many photography videos. When you get out of your car to go take a picture, before you close the door, make sure you have your car keys. Just a thought. All right, so I found this this tree in the field, and uh, I thought the tree was very interesting, but it really wasn't the the picture I was I was looking for. But I stopped and took it anyway, and so the um, so what, what what I did was more or less the trunk of the tree and the body of the tree is lined up on the the third left, and the bottom of the tree is is pretty close to the bottom third rule of thirds line. The top of the tree is pretty close to the rule of thirds top of the line. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a decent composition. It's a very interesting tree, but it really wasn't what I was looking for. Uh, but I, started, I decided to stop and, and shoot it anyway. And so, sometimes you, you don't see what you're looking for and you see something that you didn't actually know you were trying to find. And, and I, I kind of like this. Um, I want to flash back to the uh, horizon picture. The one I, I showed a uh, shot of, of the soybean field and the sky, the negative space. What I didn't mention was when, when I saw that scene, in my mind's eye, it was in black and white. So that's why I produced it into a, a black and white uh, image. When, when you stop to take a picture, you're not only thinking about the actual capturing of that image, but you can also be thinking about how will I process this? Well, do I want to do high contrast, black and white? Do I want to do rich, super vibrant colors or muted colors? You can think about how you're going to process that and uh, as you're taking the picture. So, yeah, there's another another tip for you. Um, I got another another tip. People aren't going to be giving you when they're uh, mostly. So, if you do get out of your car and for some reason you need to leave it running. Roll the window down, just just in case. Who knows, you know? Just just in case. Another free tip. Another tip that's not photography that might help somebody. All right, I think we got time for one more picture. Hopefully, we can find something that is a fast, fantastic example of that vertical uh, rule of third. So, nice. We're going this way because there's real. There's really nothing down there. Huh? I just pulled over the side of the road. There's a big wide concrete spot here, asphalt actually. I just pulled over and stopped. All right, let's bring this video to an end. Last picture here, we have a, we have a tree going on the side of the road. And uh, I used the rule of thirds to sort of put the tree on one side of the picture. And also I used the rule of thirds to sort of line up the top of the, of the horizon 
so the, the sky and the tree it all sort of uh, hopefully comes out nice and, and, and appealing also found another uh, an, another rule of thirds picture just uh, here here's another free tip for when you're out taking pictures you stop to take one picture don't just jump back in the car and drive away look around and see what else you might find I found this corn stalk run out of the middle of the out of the, out of the, middle of the soybeans and I uh, used the rule of thirds to put it in, in the picture and I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing to see to see that one piece of corn just growing right out of the beans it happens Hope you enjoyed this episode, uh, this tutorial on rule of thirds. Remember, they call the rule of thirds, I call it the suggestion of thirds, the suggestion. It's just one way of composing pictures where you use those vertical lines and those horizontal lines, make the tic-tac-toe board, put the most important elements on those lines or in those sections. Whatever the most important elements in your picture are, that's where they should fall. And this was uh, uh, on landscapes. You can use rule of thirds for portraits, you can use rule of thirds for anything uh next next episode we'll do we'll do some just some nature pictures flowers and leaves and all that sort of stuff uh, but for this one we are done we're done hopefully you enjoyed it a little romp through northwest indiana on a august afternoon that is all for this one please click the like button subscribe to the channel sign up for notifications leave me a comment question or a suggestion if there is something you would like some photography information that maybe i can i can help you with let me know. I'll, I'll do my best to answer answer your questions. In the meantime, be safe when you're out taking pictures. Pay attention to everything that's going around you. Make sure you pull off the side of the road if you're if you're on a little gravel road. A little more safety than if you pulled off on the main highway. Main highway, Northwest Indiana. Main highway. It's paved. That's all. See you in the next one.